Terrific. Your hands are stiff. My knees are killing me. His hands aren't the only thing that's stiff, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I did think it was weird. Too. I was waiting for Raker to make that joke. <laughs> you know Data can Oh, that's nice for oh, him. He's got a working wiener. That's yes. good. I have seen a lot of Star Trek, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. Those are like my, my jam from when I was a, a youngster. Picard is in his third season. Um, it was suggested to us that we do an episode on Picard on the fly, kind of like the episode we did, exactly like the episode we did for Chainsaw Man, where we don't know what we're getting into. We throw it on, we see what happens. The thing that is, is that it was also suggested to us that we just start with season three, ignore seasons one and two, uh, that season three bears almost no resemblance to them. So here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna watch some Picard and we're gonna stop when there's a drink to make. And that's the show today. I hope that that's fun for you. We're gonna invent them on the fly. I don't know what I'm gonna make. Let's start the show. You know that Star Trek was made by um, Lucille Ball? I did know that. Yeah, I know that her money was in there. Yes, yeah, her production company and stuff. She put it up. I don't want to set the world. What the f <laughs> Who's putting their chocolate in my peanut butter? What the fuck is going on? Is she pumping that like a shotgun? I don't love the way they made the phasers work, but that's me. I really hate the vibe they've created with these guns. I don't know why she had to like chuck, chuck, pump it like a shotgun. That's right. They're like, look, middle America likes their guns the way they like their guns. Gotta rack my fucking disruptor. <laughs> We're right at home in this episode. Yeah, yeah. What does that say? Oh shit, Brayford? Goddamn right, Riker's drinking. Let's get drunk and hijack a ship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought that was uh, Ben Stiller in the foreground. That does look like him. I thought that- Until the focus I... came in. <laughs> yeah. District six. Honestly, it looks like Star Wars land at- I don't know, it feels more um, like Blade Runner. Yeah. Oh, eyeball drugs, love those. Not even waiting for the doors? I was gonna say, I feel like you'd wait for the doors it's to a risky open. maneuver. I don't know how quick that sucker can stop, you know? Whoa, Yikes. whoa, whoa. Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck? I mean, it looks expensive, that's all, you know? So there, it's a Neo Constitution class. It's a smaller ship, I guess, and it, it very strongly recalls the original series design with like the flat edge on the front of the saucer section. Warp nacelles remind me of the Excelsior class, but. Oh, we got drinks. Uh, aerated wine, I guess. Looks like wine, yeah. This song. <laughs> I hate this. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> like, we need the music that says obnoxious. Smug asshole. Yeah. Request denied. I really hate this guy, but he's not wrong. <laughs> he is an enormous prick. Like, in every way, he's written to be an obnoxious prick. Right. They didn't have to set him up to be such a prick. No, there was no reason for this guy to be a prick. He's right. Yeah. <laughs> I've been under for the months trying to figure out who stole these goddamn experimental weapons from Daystrom Station and why. That was a pretty heavy exposition right there. Yeah. Who would have that conversation? <laughs> Who would say that in the middle of that sentence? Come on, come on. Sir, do you have an unauthorized launch from Shuttle Bay 3? You son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. You got me. Ah, oh, God dang it. Show me all big events coming up in the next few months. All the big events. All big events. You know, in a galaxy. In the galaxy. In the galaxy. <laughs> all the big events in the next few months in the galaxy. Adrenaline rush. From fear or the thought of seeing Beverly? Both. Terrific. Your hands are stiff. My knees are killing me. His hands aren't the only thing that's stiff, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I did think it was weird. Too. I was waiting for Raker to make that joke. <laughs> Big scary ship. Little wimpy ship. The claw. The claw. And credits. I don't know. What do you do for a drink from that? I mean, there were a lot. There are lots of drinks. 
Well, there was some whiskey. There was an old fashioned mentioned. There's there a was a blue drink in there. There was a little shot of some Romulan ale. There was, we've done that on the show. There was sorry and brandy mentioned. Mm -hmm. and, red, lots of red wine. Mentioned. And there was some red wine. And not a Malbec was also pointed out. I don't know. That's a tough one for me. Well, he mentioned an old fashioned. What, yeah. would, an, what would an old fashioned with hundreds of years of. A new fashion. A future fashion. Okay, maybe a future fashioned. I don't hate that idea. Sarian brandy. I might have to look up what Sarian brandy is even supposed to be like. We should also look up a Samarian sunset. Can you look that up for me? Computer, bring up a Samarian sunset. <laughs> I don't know if Sarian brandy goes into a Samarian sunset, but the whole thing makes me think of it. And I know I've never made a Samarian sunset on the show. So maybe we do those. We do a Samarian sunset and a future fashioned. All right, well, let's cut here. We'll grab some ingredients. We'll just pick this up right where we dropped off here. And we'll make these two drinks on today's episode of How to Drink. Ranger Greg here again. and I am once more partnered with Yellowstone Bourbon to take you on a mixological tour of the national parks. Let's go. Yellowstone is the oldest national park in the United States. It's established in 1872. The park sits on top of a massive volcano which last erupted over 640,000 years ago. Yellowstone has over 10,000 hydrothermal features like geysers, hot springs, and mud pots, which is more than anyone else in the world. At 3,472 square miles, it's larger than Rhode Island and Delaware combined, and as a result, it's full of plants! Mostly conifers, like the lodgepole pine, white bark pine, spruces, firs, etc. Now there's a syrup called Magolio that's made from young green pine cones, and I thought that given the foliage at Yellowstone, that would be a great place to start for a recipe honoring the park. And I call this drink a lodgepole sling. So we're going to need our shaker, and to that I'm going to add a half an ounce of lemon. Half an ounce of cherry hearing. One ounce of our Magolio. Now this is of course a pine syrup or a syrup made from pine cones. Kind of the unique ingredient here. Has a very, well, piney smell. And two ounces of our Yellowstone bourbon. Now we're gonna shake that with ice. I'm gonna use this fancy spear of ice, but you can use any ice you have. And we're gonna strain the drink right into the top of that. And honestly, I'm only trying to hold back the very top of that. I'm going to top that up with a little club soda, a little seltzer. For garnish, I'm going to go with a little bit of mint, which we should help it get to express itself a little bit. And a couple of the pine cones that you made your Magolio with or purchased it with. I'm just kind of perching them right on top of the glass there. And that is how I make a lodgepole sling. Ooh, that is different. Ooh, what a lovely approach. You know, you get this sweetly balanced sweet and, and lemon, almost like a sour at the front with the Yellowstone bourbon. Mm. But very quickly, it's overtaken by very strong pine notes. Very strong, like, like sawing pine boards that are full of sap, like standing in a heavy, uh, in a serious pine forest in, in the spring when everything is fresh. It has that, and then that, continues to evolve into this new dimension, this like piney kind of nutty direction. Mm. I don't know that I've ever had anything quite like it. It strikes me as unique, much like Yellowstone itself. This year, Yellowstone Bourbon has donated $250,000 to National Parks Conservation Association, making them NPCA's largest annual corporate donor. By choosing to drink Yellowstone, you're choosing to preserve and protect our national parks. So to find a bottle near you, visit limestonebranch.com or visit curiata.com and get yourself some free online shipping. Thank you, Yellowstone Bourbon, and now back to how to drink. All right, so um, I said that I was gonna do a future fashioned for Riker, who likes an old fashioned, and a Samarian sunset, which is actually, if I'm not mistaken, it comes up a couple times in Next Gen. I think it's in the first episode or second episode of Next Gen. It's mentioned later, and Mr. Scott winds up having one, says that it's weak and sour. Uh, but I don't think it's actually weak. I think that's sort of a joke about Mr. Scott drinking a lot. And I've been thinking about a Sumerian sunset for a while. We've done an episode of Star Trek drinks, maybe even more than one episode. I think we did Klingon blood wine. I know we did Romulan ale. Sumerian sunset is one I haven't done. It's actually, it's a real cocktail. The other ones are not cocktails, right? Like those are analogs for distilled or fermented spirits and liquors and beers. The trouble is, is that the visual appearance of it is something impossible. 
It's a clear glass that when you tinkle it, it turns kind of gold in color. The other thing we were talking about is a future fashioned, which is an idea I have. What do you want to start with here? I think you got to start with the Sumerian sunset. The Sumerian the sunset. All right, let's start there. I don't really know exactly what goes in this. I am going off the cuff. I grabbed a couple of ingredients. I have some ideas about how to build this drink. So I did start out thinking I was going to make this with cognac, but now for visual reasons, I'm thinking it kind of can't be cognac. It might need to be a vodka drink. I'm going to sample some of these uh, other liqueurs. Testing. Ooh, what else we got over there? We got, um, take the creme de men. Oh, you know what I want? I want the creme de mezcal. This is Del Maguey creme de mezcal. I think we got to go with vodka on this particular drink or creme de mezcal. I'm going to keep the vodka in reserve. There we go. Let me taste this Cointreau and take a peek at it. All right, we're going to start with a half an ounce of Cointreau. Just to reiterate, I'm making this up as I go. I have very little plan. I have some ideas. I'm going to do an ounce and a half of our creme de mezcal from Del Maguey. And this is a sweetened mezcal. In fact, I'm going to stop short. I'm going to go to an ounce. Uh, maybe we don't want it to be quite that sweet. So that's one ounce of mezcal creme, creme de mez mezcal, uh, half an ounce of Cointreau. And then I want to do a taste, but I'm almost certain I want to add some falernum to that. Yeah, we're going to add a quarter ounce for now. Give that a quick stir. I like where we're headed here. I actually like that quite a bit. So that's like a three, two, one kind of thing, right? So we've got one ounce of mezcal creme, half an ounce. One ounce of creme de mezcal, half an ounce of Cointreau, and a quarter ounce of the velvet fenerium. Fenerium. It's a three, two, one kind of thing, right? So you got three parts, one part, two, whatever. whatever. You know what I'm saying? Three parts, two parts, one part. I don't know what else it needs. I mean, other than citrus potentially. I think at this point, all this drink really needs is some volume. It needs to be doubled because it's too small. So let's just increase the ratio. Another ounce of creme de mezcal. Increase the proportions by the same ratio. We're just going to double the drink. Half an ounce of Cointreau, quarter ounce of Falernum. It's a glass of booze. It is. I mean, but a lot of classic cocktails are. You know, if you think about a martini, there's nothing else in it but booze. And actually, to that extent, actually some orange bitters here might be really nice. Yeah, I'm going to throw in two dashes of orange bitters. So um, I've decided this is the glass we're going to put our Sumerian Sunset in. I'm going to prepare that glass. We're going to use a little bit of, I have a bunch of luster dusts, edible ed glitters you can use for food and drinks. And we're going to actually use a little mix of these two because this one's very fine and this one's really glittery. And I'm just going to like kind of seed the glass with a little bit of gold lust. So I don't know what the right amount is. I do know that like it's easy to overdo it, but it's also, I've got one shot at this on camera for now. <laughs> And it's easy to underdo it too. So I'm putting in quite a bit. So that is well seeded. Um, in a perfect world, I would like that to not be in there and I would like it to just be kind of invisible. There's gold now floating in the air. I'm gonna look like I'm in a teleporter, which true because the original effect for the Star Trek original series teleporter was a glass of water with some glitter in it that they stirred and then they composite, you know, whatever they did it. I don't know if composite is the right word, but laid it in on top of people teleporting. And it's kind of crazy looking. It's everywhere in the air. This is like bizarre. It's kind of magical. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm having an episode, like honestly. It, if you look in the close up right now, it's like, yeah, you can really see it. Is it pretty? Cool. I mean, I like I said, I feel like I'm having an episode. I feel like this is a epileptic it's discharge. <laughs> cool. Let's stir our drink. I got a gigantic cube I'm gonna crack today. Oh man. And we shall stir it. So I'm going to use my bar spoon to help me kind of sneak this into the glass so that hopefully it won't disturb the gold luster right away. Hopefully this works very carefully. We do have some floating. Let's do a twist of lemon, a twist of lemon. And uh, we pick up our Sumerian sunset and hopefully this looks really cool. You give it a little jostle, should be able to just give it a little jostle. Maybe in this case we need a spoon. The Earth version doesn't really work quite like the one on the show, but the idea is that it would do that and become a Sumerian sunset. And so there's our Sumerian sunset. I think that's very nice. Oddly, there's notes of chocolate in it, despite it containing no chocolate. Has a smoky mezcal orange thing happening. I quite like that. It's approachable. It's not bracing or anything like that. It's a very mildly mezcalish flavor. It has a little bit of um, this lime kind of sweetness from 
the Falernum. Easy to drink, easy to drink. Maybe a bit sweet, honestly. Maybe you could split Crema Mezcal for vodka or for regular Mezcal. Let's put a little more light behind it so you can really see that Sumerian sunset. Maybe it needs light in front of it, really. It's fun. I don't know. What do you think? Cool. Okay. Now try it. I like it. Quite sweet. Yeah, a little too sweet. Well, let's see if we change the ratio, if that helps it. Maybe we drop the sweetness with another, you know, assume you cut all of that with an ounce of vodka proportionally. I think that's better. I think however those numbers work out, you should do that. Here, try that. See if that's a little better. Yeah, that's better. Oh yeah. I wonder if clarified orange juice would have been the way to go here. Mm, like if we were gonna rework this. Yeah, because I'd like it to have more of a fresh fruit thing yeah, happening like in it. But there's no way to keep that dead clear. Right. I think even clarified orange juice, would ha it has color. It doesn't have like, it's not colorless. The lemon, I think you could get away with. Well, lemon would have added enough. Oh no, it would have clouded it yeah, right up. Right. Right up. From a standpoint of like flavor balance, what happens if you throw lemon in it is an interesting question. It does have a little bit of like a pinky tone to it. Pinky? Pink-ish tone. Not yeah, but it still starts out clear. Yeah, fresh citrus helps it a lot. So that's the thing, you gotta do clarified juice, probably clarified lemon juice. Okay, no time for that right now, honestly. <laughs> that it, takes forever. It does, it takes a while, but it's good to know that, yeah, that's what I would do. Maybe uh, I'll rework this and I'll come up with the specs and we'll put them up on screen. Uh, let's move along next, right on to our future fashion. The first question I have is, which glass do you think says future fashion more? Oh, definitely. The second one, they were like using glasses right like that. Sorry, my right, your left, yeah. I feel like that's almost the glass they had in the episode. It might have been. All right, so I wanna make an ice ball. So I'm gonna start this drink by setting up my ice ball maker, which comes from Visky. So, future fashion. I've got like a pile here. This is getting to be a mess. This is not great. Um, I think it's gonna be boybin. I had this idea that we would do a rinse of mezcal. I know we just did mezcal already, so now I'm starting to rethink those ideas. I grabbed some bitters that are in a really futuristic label. They're from the uh, How to Drink Patreon Discord Secret Santa. This was my Secret Santa present, so thank you. Cardamom and caramelized raisin bitters. These are really neat. Mm, super cool. And I think beyond that, what would I do? I don't know. That kind of might be it. That's a lot going on. On that, let's crack ice and make this drink, I think. Yeah, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my glassware that I'm going to make the drink in, and I'm going to put in a splash of, I think you'd pronounce this Hua, the Hua Mezcal. They have a very nice bottle, and they make a great Mezcal. It feels like the future when I look at that. So when I eat future -y stuff, I tend to reach for it. Give that a good rinse, and I will pour off the remainder into my dump bucket. Great, glass is prepared. Bring this guy back in, crack some ice in there. Uh, we're gonna do, I don't know, um, actually probably a quarter ounce pour of simple. Actually, it's more like a half, a little less than a half. Really not that much though, honestly, when you get right down to it. Two ounces of our bourbon, uh, a couple squirts of our bitters. It's like about three dashes. I don't know, Mara, I think we need something else in here to make this the future, future fashioned. What makes something old, new, fresh? Well, you did rinse with Mezcal. Oh yeah. Well, let's taste what's in here and see where we're at. That's a fascinating situation. It's a little bit dry up front. I think I'm gonna hit it with just um, a bar spoon of maraschino, mayhaps two. That rounded it out. I'm gonna take my big old round ball of ice. Feels like science fiction already. Drop that into the glass. Still missing my my, the, the appropriate strainer for this mixing glass, but that's all right. A twist of orange. What do you think? think the uh, cherry has come back into vogue in the future? I don't. I just don't. Do you? <laughs> I was going to say, fuck yeah, but why not? No, absolutely not. No cherries in the future. Let's put a cherry in it. It's the future. And this is a drink I'm going to call the future fashioned for Commander Riker. I wish I had a chair. If I had a chair, I could do the Riker maneuver. What's his maneuver? The Riker maneuver is mounting a chair by swinging your leg over the back and sitting down. That's really funny. It became a thing. It's like his whole deal. All right, here we go. The future fashioned. 
Oh, oh, that's fun. Oh, man. <laughs> I like that a lot. The Mezcal Rinse is doing a very subtle job, borderline imperceptible job, of putting the most faint and distant wisps of smoke and, I don't know, whatever you call that, salt. Actually, in fact, point in fact, salt. A little drop of salt would not be out of the question here. Maybe I would actually even put a little salt right into it, to be honest. But at this point, we're a little, little after the fact because like usually you'd want to do that when you were mixing the drink, but I'm just curious. I think salt in this particular drink might really do something for it. Yeah. A couple drops of saline solution, solution go a long way in this drink. Mmm, brings out the orange. So the um, very faint wisps of smoke and, and the burning uh, um, mezcal, faint, very faint. The whiskey sweetness and the cardamom bitters with their holographic future looking label. It's got some real Epcot next generation vibes. Right, from the future. So that has such a unique flavor. It is so far from Angostura. It is a, a wildly different drink just by making that swap. It is, I mean, first off, cardamom comes through very loud. Cardamom is a very dominant flavor here. If you like cardamom, you're gonna like it. If you don't like cardamom, I don't know what's wrong with you. It's delicious. Cardamom is super present. This is supposed to have caramelized raisin as a flavor component too. I'm not actually sure I'm picking up on that, but the cardamom, I'm getting that. You are not missed. What else could I do to this to sort of future it up? I might throw a spritz of absinthe at it before I'm done playing with it, but on the whole, this feels really good. It is 100% an old fashioned. It is extremely recognizable as an old fashioned when you drink it. It's a skew. It's got different flavors in it than you would expect to find in an old fashioned. It is just, um, oh, I don't know. What's the word here I'm looking for? Um, Surprising. Surprising. It's got a more, it is surprising. It, it is more spiced than a standard old fashioned. It has more prominent spices in it. And because those spices, usually in Angostura, if you have a, a, an idea of what an old fashioned tastes like, right? It tastes like a singular construct. You don't really taste the whiskey. You don't taste the Angostura anymore. You taste an old fashioned. But by deviating from Angostura, we now taste those components again, at least I do. So you get that that whiskey. That all kind of comes together into, I don't know, something that I would say is pretty uh, fun, futuristic. Future fun. I could see that being an old fashioned in 300 years easily. You want to try it? Is it only 300 years in the future for? Four, maybe? It's not as, I mean, originally it was the 23rd century, if I'm not mistaken, in the next generation. Oh, I'm not too far off. No, it's still an old fashioned. It's like an old fashioned askew. Yeah, but there's a lot more spice going on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And for funsies, I want to see what happens here if we take it into the direction. By the way, the maraschino, you're not getting maraschino because I added very little to it. It's just that before it was almost astringent and then the maraschino kind of neutralized that. It took it out. Just for fun, let's throw a spritz of absinthe over the top. And that was an ugly spritz, but all the same. Let's see what that does to this drink. Not bad. Interesting. Really complements the cardamom flavors. I might consider that to be a huge upgrade. Oh. I was actually really skeptical at first, but ooh. Man, that complements the cardamom. There's something in that tiny tinge of anise from the absinthe that is really kind of waking up and sharpening the flavor of the cardamom and also the whiskey. Um, it brings them clearer into focus, almost like you would expect adding acid to a food would do, right? Like the three things you can do to a food to really make it taste more of itself is add fat, add salt, add acid. Those are the three flavor enhancing magic ingredients. It works almost like you added an acid to it. Why don't you try that? I think you're gonna find it to be, personally, I think it's it's, um, it's a big improvement. Oh yeah. Do you detect it or no? Yeah. Am I crazy? Mm -hmm. No, I get it. Even I think with it's a little good. spritz. It's, it's uh, if you're stuck in space, you're not getting a lot of spices all the time. Well, they can replicate anything they want. Yeah, that's not an issue, huh? Now they got a replicator. Well, I don't know. I think that's it. We checked out Picard. It's an interesting show. I might want to watch some more of it. If Mrs. How to Drink wants to watch it with me, she will not. And uh, Not sci-fi. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Making her watch Star Trek is going to be 
that's a bridge too far. Especially when like she finds out there's a lot of it. But uh, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. This was a watch and make a drink from Picard, uh, which I understand is in its third season still. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I like this format. We did it with uh, Chainsaw Man. It was a lot of fun. I'd like to keep doing more of these, but also if nobody likes them, that's fine with me too, because they take a long time to shoot. Any thoughts about that, Meredith? They do take a while to shoot. They do take a while to shoot. I think shoot. you finally, the Sumerian Sunset has been on our list of possibilities oh, for yeah, a while. Oh yeah, it has. It has been on the show like, hmm, let's do that for a while. I would like to upgrade it with some clarified lem um, fruit juice and change it up just a little bit but I think we got an idea there. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been How to Drink, the show about making cocktails and how to drink them. You'll find me on the social media places appearing before your very eyes, and I've been making this show for a very long time, so check out the other things appearing here in the corners. Thank you. Meredith and I have a podcast. It's called Midnight Local. It is uh, available wherever you get your podcasts. You can get it at youtube.com slash Midnight Local. There'll be a link up here. There's gonna be a link in the picot below. We watch a lot. We, we're, it's a movie show. It's a movie show. We also talk about other things. Other things and movies. All right, guys, see you soon next time on How to Drink. Bye-bye.